accident happened. In inaction at the Iranian embassy and take booty at the box office. Director Ian Sharp had the challenge of his first feature film. I feel that the story is a good, strong, uh, provocative story because the subject that we're dealing with, rather than it being some sort of nebulous third world grievance, is a, um, a subject which is universal and uh, of interest to us all and affects us all. And I think that the public, when they see it, will not only be excited by it, well, I hope anyway, will not only be excited by the action side of it, but also will come away and um, will probably have a very ambivalent attitude towards both the SAS and towards the uh, terrorists. Some will think that the terrorists uh, got exactly what they deserve, and others will, I think, will possibly be, in, will certainly be in sympathy for their cause, but perhaps the, may, the means that they choose to go about it will disagree with, and others will feel that the SAS are glamorous and what a wonderful life it is, and others will, I'm sure that quite a number of people will think, uh, as they did after the Iranian siege, that was a little bit heavy. And is that really necessary to go to extreme lengths like that? Well, we leave that open. Can you, for a little wind money. Wind money? Wind money, you see, because as we're standing under the helicopter, uh, we're all getting blown apart. And it's blowing some people's partings and things like that. Well, you tell, you tell uh, your friends over there that I'll take it up with the banks. And if I could let them know on Tuesday week. Oh, my is that favorite, right? favorite producer. <laughs> I'll tell them. Lewis Collins entered the fray with all the spirit of a true professional, not to mention past experience as a para-terrier, honed by further training with a military group about which he wouldn't talk. So just in and away, right? Yeah. Most stars in television series are maligned for one reason or another. The audience has accepted their uh, behavior patterns uh, as a matter of course. Uh, those of us who know people like Telly Savalas and uh, and um, uh, Jim Garner know that they're not like that at all. Um, Lewis is not a very violent man per se, but uh, he is strong, he's a, an ideal leading man, he has a twinkle and a great sense of humor. Uh, or he has the, uh, the, the makings of a great star. Initially, I was going to do quite a lot of action in terms of uh, military action, but now they've decided to make the character undercover, plain clothes. So not a lot of the film uh, depicts me as an actual soldier as such. So all the training I did running around the Welsh hills is all fun. I want you to join us. Of the people's lobby. Not my style. Might be interesting. Look, separated or not, I've got a wife and kids to support. That takes a real job. I'm to pay you. Okay, what do you want me to do? Oh, a bit of everything. And how much are you going to pay me? Five hundred pounds a week. Five hundred pounds a week? Not for a man who doesn't know anything about what you do? I expect we'll need your expertise. Is it a deal? Well, of course it's a deal. I'm not crazy. Great. Oh, there's one other thing. Um, I could uh, make life a bit easier for you. You could move in with me if that interests you. I've got a problem. What? The mice in my flat. What about the mice in your flat? They'll miss me. <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, bring them along then. Do you want some coffee? If the role of a terrorist was something of a change for Judy Davis, she disguised the fact with the same consummate skill she demonstrated in more demanding parts played during her short but spectacular career. Judy uh, Davis uh, has given, in my opinion, in her short career span, 
three or four of the most remarkable performances, each entirely different. Uh, and since I've been in casting for 30 years, I spotted her, of course, as most people did in my brilliant career, an incredibly penetrating performance she gave and was duly awarded uh, for it. Uh, I mean, any actress who can defeat Meryl Streep has to be an extraordinary actress, and of course she did that in the British Academy Awards. I went to the trouble to see other films in production and in, and in Russia's form, and I simply had confirmation. Uh, my first impression was right, that she is uh, an astonishing actress. And she lives the part she's playing, and here she is playing a terrorist leader with such... Uh, uh, Dedication, I find it a little frightening at times. Dinner is being given tonight at the home of the American ambassador. Now, there's going to be a number of high-ranking officials there, including the American Secretary of State and the British Foreign Secretary. We're going to take over that place, and we're going to hold it until our demands are met. Now, remember, we're taking those guns along for a reason. Okay, let's go. Come on, move on. Uh, I suppose there's no chance that I'll be given a gun. No. You know, ma'am, your trust is overwhelming. Still, I'm surprised you need me, really. It's very well organized. I'm impressed. Well, I forgot to tell you something. Your wife and child have been taken hostage. Now, it only takes one phone call. The character played by Judy Davis is inevitably linked with Patty Hearst. It's equally inevitable that Miss Davis denies any similarity with that luckless lady. My own approach to this character has, has had nothing to do with her at all. In her book, she... She almost seems to not really take the terrorists or their politics terribly seriously. And in order to play this character, I had to believe that she was reasonably intelligent and had what she believed were good, really good reasons for resorting to violence. So what was more, much more helpful to me was to read a book by uh, Michael Borman, or Bommy Borman as he's called, and it's a book, Terror or Love. And he was involved in a West German terrorist group called the Blues Brothers. On the level now, do you really think what you're doing will make the world a better place? Could it possibly be worse? Yeah, I think so. Consider a nuclear war. Which is exactly what we're trying to prevent. What the hell do you think we're trying to do? Like Judy Davis, Richard Widmark's performance was watched for parallels with a real-life notable, the then Secretary of State, Alexander Haig. I don't have any, uh, any Secretary of State in mind, because a Secretary of State can be anybody. And, and this is a man that uh, uh, is defined by the nature of the sequence that I'm involved in. And it has nothing to do with... with the comparisons with any Secretary of State before, now, or after. It's just as I visualize this pr particular political man and what he's doing in this particular scene. It's very reassuring to walk on the set and find artists of the caliber of uh, Widmark and <clears throat> Judy Davis, Lewis Collins and so on, who's the only one that I've worked with before. Um, and I always had great admiration for him. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled to bits that he's got his first big screen role. Um, simply because uh, it, it makes life so much easier when there are so many things to concentrate on, so many different aspects to worry about. Uh, if the performances, you don't have to wring out the performances as much as you've got to all the, uh, wring out all the other problems from everybody else, because uh, as, you, as a director, you've, you, you're looking for every tiny thing so that you can concentrate on performances uh, only when all the other things are out of your head and by that time you're a bit weary when you get to the take. So if you've got these sort of major artists, then uh, particularly when you see them at Rush's, it's just wonderful and you see tremendous performances there. Uh, that's, the, that's the greatest feeling of all, actually. No, even, even, above, even above the action, a guy sort of uh, smashing through windows and uh, um, diving out of helicopters, to see a really good performance from an artist on camera is the biggest thrill of all. You haven't got the faintest idea what we're on about, man. Well, let me guess. Just let me guess. 
peace on earth, right? Oh, I think he's got it. Oh, smart boy. You ought to be in politics. Well, isn't it a bit strange that you resort to terrorism to win your peace? We represent the common people. We don't have access to diplomacy, which is just another name for corrupt power politics. And that hasn't succeeded too well, has it? Ah. And you think the common people want to be represented like this, huh? When they understand they're being represented, not manipulated, yes. Uh-huh. And the use of terrorism doesn't upset you. <laughs> I don't believe this guy. <laughs> right now, terrorism suits our purpose. Well, suppose you succeed. Which we will. I imagine you've thought about the horror of a nuclear explosion. Oh, indeed I have. The death, the devastation, mutilation, the agony carried on to the next generation, all of it. The horror never leaves my mind. But it doesn't bother you. Yes, it bothers me. It destroys me. Well, now, that's encouraging.